Right, so if you are thinking of quitting sugar for 30 days, so doing one of those challenges, then this video is just for you. Don't do it, and in this video I explain why. And also while I'm here, I have opened up my free group just for women who have binge eating and sugar addiction problems. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be explaining how you can join that group for free. So let's get into the video. So it's become really popular to do quit sugar for 30 days challenges or similar things and give up like all the processed foods, all the foods that have added sugar in them. So the question is why? To start with, why do people do these things? And so the reason is that it creates a hard and fast rule of I cannot have sugar. So most people that are struggling with weight loss have some kind of cravings and creating a rule very black and white of I cannot have sugar makes it much easier because of the cravings. So it's very common for you to go for something, let's say some cookies, some ice cream, some chocolate, and let me know in the comments if you have experienced this down there, and you have one or two, and then your mind is like, oh, that was nice, let's have some more. And then you get the craving, that powerful urge, and you can't stop yourself. So going on a challenge or doing a challenge for 30 days gives you that very hard and fast black and white rule of I am, I am having nothing, I'm having nothing, I'm gonna, be really good and I'm gonna quit for 30 days and that's gonna give me really good results. And it comes from the desperation and struggle to lose weight and needing to do something to control and get rid of the cravings, right? However, doing challenges like these often make the cravings worse. So let me say that again, doing challenges like these often make the cravings worse. So during the challenge you might be okay, but after, you can often end up with worse binge eating and craving problems and you end up in a worse situation than you started. So the first question to ask yourself is what is the actual issue? Because you're obviously just gonna be giving up sugar for 30 days and you do enjoy it and you do want to eat it again after the challenge is over. So what is the actual issue? So from speaking to people and my own experience, the reason people and you do these challenges is because you don't trust yourself around sugar and these tempting foods. So making it black and white and saying absolutely no for 30 days, it becomes much easier to stick to the challenge and of course lose weight. And you will lose weight if you are cutting out these foods that have lots of calories in them. So like ice cream, cake, cookies, things like that. But like I said, it's because you don't trust yourself and you violate your decisions around food the whole time. So you might have a little bit of something you enjoy, but then end up having loads of it, feel bad because you went against your decisions, feel guilty, try and make changes and feel bad because you're eating too little then and all those kind of things. And it ends up in a big spiral of downhill, feeling terrible and getting worse results. And the question also is the sustainability because of course you are going to be eating sugar again after 30 days and no matter how much you tell yourself that once the 30 days is up you're going to be much better around it and the craving is going to be gone, they will not be gone. And in actual fact doing these challenges and cutting out sugar makes the binging worse. Let me say that again. It makes the binging, the cravings and emotional eating worse. And I'm going to explain that now so it's very clear why. All cravings and emotional eating, they come from the unconscious part of your mind. So this is the survival brain. So your survival brain has made a link between food and your feelings. So eating food makes you feel better. And for your unconscious survival brain, this is good because it doesn't want you to feel bad. Feeling bad is a threat and it looks out for threats. And that's why it's very powerful in giving you these cravings. So it's the same part of the brain that if you step out onto the street in front of a moving car, it makes you jump back without you even having to think about it. So it's very powerful and it gets you to do things to keep you alive basically, or whatever it thinks it's doing to keep you alive. Now, the first thing to understand about the unconscious part of your brain is that it doesn't process negative instructions. So what do I mean by that? 
So don't think of a pink elephant. What do you think of a pink elephant? So it doesn't process the negative part of that statement, the don't. So whatever I say, so for example, don't think about chocolate, it has to appear in your mind to process that statement. So it doesn't process the negatives. So negatives could be don't, could be no, could be free from, it could be without, it could be avoid, all those kind of negative words. It has to process the sentence. So whatever you say, don't eat the chocolate, I'm gonna be really good and not eat the cake, all those kind of things. You have to think about that food to do that. Now, when we combine this with how your brain works to learn things, so we can learn things through something called mental practice or visualization. You may have heard of this. So this is where you go over things in your mind and you get better at them. So actors do this, sports players do this. You might do this before an important meeting or an important job interview. You go over something in your mind to get better at it. And so for example, an actor might go over their lines in their mind and they close their eyes and go through all the lines and they get better at it. It builds the neural connections in your brain. A sports player may imagine swinging a racket or kicking a ball, scoring a goal. Someone that's ill or sick and in a hospital bed can actually use visualization to imagine tasks that they can't do and it builds the neural connections. So you don't actually have to physically do something to get better at it, you can imagine it, and your brain will start building the connections to form the ability to do it. So when we combine those two concepts together, so the fact that your brain doesn't process negative instructions, so when you are saying don't eat the chocolate, you're imagining chocolate, and you're constantly thinking about it, so every day that you're doing this challenge, you're thinking, oh, I'm being really good. I'm gonna avoid the chocolate. I'm gonna resist the chocolate. I'm not gonna eat the chocolate. I'm going to, yeah, like not have it. I'm gonna be um, yeah, perfect. I'm not gonna have the chocolate. And every day you are doing this. So you're actually practicing thinking about chocolate. And when the day comes that you finish the challenge, what have you practiced and got really good at? eating chocolate, right? So when you do allow yourself some, your brain's like, wow, this is really good. Not only have we been restricting this, so actually let's make the most of it because we don't know when the next restriction period is gonna, gonna come, make the most of it, satisfy these cravings, but it's really easy to do because we practiced it and it feels really good. And so you've ended up accidentally installing this binge behavior. And most people don't realize that. And that's why the cravings get stronger when you resist food that you don't want to be eating. So the whole thing becomes so much worse and you often end up putting more weight on because you have stronger cravings. And you see a similar thing with alcohol. So you may have heard of dry January where people cut out alcohol after the Christmas and New Year period because they think they've drunk too much. As soon as February comes around, they go and have a big binge session and start drinking more. And so these challenges, although they have like good meaning and you think you're gonna help yourself by doing them, you are actually doing the opposite. And it comes from the desperation mindset of I need to do something, like nothing has worked and I need to just be even better and like be perfect and just cut it all out. But it just doesn't work. And in actual fact, the opposite works better of including, always including something you really enjoy. But a lot of people get scared with this because of the cravings and not being able to control themselves around food. That is why I have opened up my free group for women who have emotional eating problems. If you would like to join this group, I have put a link in the description down there below. In this group, I do weekly live trainings on how to solve emotional eating. So if you would like to join, it is down there. And so let me know in the comments if you found this video useful. Let me know if you have done one of the challenges. Let me know your results. Let me know what you think. And subscribe if you haven't already. And like as well. And I'll see you in the next video.